So today we're going to look at some, we're going to look at first a very easy angle to figure out what all the trig functions are, and then we're going to look at three other angles that we're going to very carefully figure out what all the trig values, all the x and y coordinates um, on the unit circle are. So we'll start with a easier one. So let's find all six trig function values of theta equals 3 pi over 2. So step one, draw your unit circle. So 3 pi over 2, where in the world is that going to be? So first thing that you should always be aware of, fractions generally suck. So how do you make them suck less? You go common denominator. So let's think about common denominator of 2. So when I label all my angles, I'm going to make sure everything is in halves. So the first angle we hit would be just pi over 2. It's already in halves, no problem. The next major angle we would hit is pi over here. But I want to go common denominator, so I'm going to write it as 2 pi over 2 so that we can very easily compare these numbers together. If you have common denominator, you're really just looking at numerators of fractions. So you're kind of not really thinking about fractions when you have common denominator. So there's pi over 2, 2 pi over 2. What is the bottom angle? Two. If I went down to here, how many pi over 2s is that? So the first one's 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. If I kept going, I could get 4 pi over 2 would be the full rotation, also known as 2 pi. But again, I'm counting in halves because rations suck unless you get common denominator. And then they're not really, they're not nearly as bad if you can see everything laid out in halves. All right, so 3 pi over 2 is the angle I want. There is the point where that angle would intersect the unit circle. What coordinates does this point have? We're on the unit circle, so we're one unit away from the origin. So which, which one is 0? Is x 0 or is the y 0? So our x is 0 and our y would be negative 1. So don't go over at all and go down 1. All right, so that's our point P. Now what I want you to do is write down all six trig values for this uh, point or this angle. So find cos 3 pi over 2, sine 3 pi over 2, Sine tangent 3 pi over 2. Secant 3 pi over 2. Cosecant 3 pi over 2. And cotangent. So I will do the first one, which is cosine. Cosine is just the x coordinate, which is 0. So that's cosine. Now what I want you to do is fill in the other five values. And you can look back in your notes to the definitions which were right here, our six trig functions. So I can leave it here on this screen so you don't have to keep flipping in your notes back and forth. Let's go ahead and write out the other five.
So I reduce down the easy ones, like 1 over negative 1 is negative 1, and 0 over almost anything is 0. Uh, now I said almost anything. What's the one number you're not allowed to have on the denominator? 0. So what do we call the negative 1 over 0 and positive 1 over 0? So I'm going to write those undefined. And if you're feeling lazy, just write undef. That's good enough. So there are plenty of times where some of these trig values are going to be undefined. So it's any time x or y is 0, and it also appears in the denominator. So I intentionally picked a relatively easy angle. Like I said before, there's four easy angles. They're the ones that land at the corners of the circle. They're either 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, negative 1, or 0, positive 1. So now what we're going to do is look at angles that are not right at the corners. And how in the world can we figure out their x and y values? And another thing to notice, if you get the first three trig values, the second set of three are basically just the reciprocals of the first three. So just looking at cosine is 0, so the reciprocal would be undefined. And sine is negative 1, so the reciprocal also negative 1. Tangent is undefined. It's probably better to think about that fraction right there. What happens when you reciprocate that fraction? You get 0, because 0 would then jump to the numerator. So I will mostly only ask you for the first three trig values most of the time, because if you can get those, you just write the reciprocals, you'll get the other three. So we're going to just focus on the first three trig values uh, on these next examples here. So what we're going to do is find the three trig function values of theta equals pi over 4. So step one, we need to figure out where in the world's pi over 4. So we're going to draw a unit circle. And a little more space at the top. So the top angle is pi over 2. But remember, fractions suck unless you go common denominator. So what I'm going to do instead of going to halves, I'm going to write it as fourths. So we're going to write this as 2 pi over 4. Once we see that going up there is 2 pi over 4, where is just 1 pi over 4 going to be? So we're going to go exactly halfway to the uh, um, upwards rotation. So right about there. There's pi over 4. And eventually, we're going to figure out the xy coordinates of that point right there. And the way we're going to do it is using some triangles. So what I'm going to do is form a triangle. When you form triangles, you always drop a perpendicular to the x-axis. Shouldn't drawing have two w's? It should have two, according to the English rules I learned. But I know it doesn't. But I don't have a reason for it. If I draw, it would be like a quadruple u. If I drawing a perpendicular to the x-axis. All right, so that's what I did. Now, I'm being careful to say the x-axis. What you don't want to do is make a triangle. You can absolutely make a right triangle up here. But I don't want you to form the one to the y-axis. Always form the triangle 
to the x-axis. So I'm going to draw a blown up version of this triangle. And the only thing we really know about it, we know the pi over 4, we know that there's a right angle. And oops, don't use red. That measurement is 1, because we're in a unit circle, so that radius is going to be 1. So we also know that measure of the side. So I'm going to draw a big version of this triangle. So measuring in radians, our right angle is pi over 2. We have a pi over 4 angle, and we know that side is 1. And if we think about x and y, the x measures the horizontal side length, and the y measures the vertical side length. So we can label that as x and that as y. So you know, hopefully you know the Pythagorean theorem. So we could use Pythagorean theorem here, and that tells us x squared plus y squared equals 1 squared. So we could use that. Uh, so for those of you who took geometry somewhat recently, how can I get the third angle in this triangle? You're used to probably thinking about it in degrees. So, so what do all three angles add up to? And you can answer in degrees. 180. So the angle sum would be 180. Or what is 180 in radians? So it'll be a half rotation would be a 1 pi. So our angle sum is going to be pi. So our right, angle sum is 180 degrees, which is pi radians. So if I add up all three angles, I should get pi. So I'll give the other angle a name. We'll go with phi, which is basically a sideways theta, or a theta that has a, its line is written vertically. So we have pi over 4 plus pi over 2 plus phi equals pi. So this would be really easy if everything is in fourths. So let's turn everything into fourths. So you got pi over 4 plus 2 pi over 4 plus phi equals 4 pi over 4. And if you want, you can even write 1 pi over 4. So without doing any real algebra, what angle does phi need to equal? So I need to get 4 pi over 4s. I get 1 pi over 4 and 2 pi over 4, so I need 1 more pi over 4. Or you could subtract to the other side. Maybe I'll do the subtract to the other side. So phi is pi over 4. So now we know two angles in this triangle are the same. What type of triangle do we have? What's a special name for this triangle? Almost. That would be three, if they're all three the same. No, I just blanked on what it was called. I knew it a second ago. Isosceles. I think it's an isosceles. So two sides are the same. Or two angles are the same, an isosceles triangle. That also means two, the opposite sides of the same angles are also the same. So the opposite sides of these angles are right here, x and y. So that means x is the same as y. So we have an isosceles triangle, thus x is the same as y. So because your angles are the same, that means your opposite sides are going to be the same, so x equals y. We also have the Pythagorean theorem. x squared plus y squared equals 1 squared.
So if you either haven't taken geometry or it's been a long time, uh, these words like isosceles may not mean anything to you, but that just means if your triangle has two angles that are the same, the opposite sides have to be the same also. All right, so now we're just going to do some algebra. So x equals y. So I can either replace y by x, or I could replace the other x by a y. It doesn't matter which way you go. I'll just replace the y by an x. And 1 squared is 1. So test your algebra skills and solve for x. So you solve for x carefully. We got x squared plus x squared, which means there's two x squareds. And then get the two out of there by dividing. And then take a square root. And we get that plus minus square root 1 half. So we have to decide, should x be positive or negative? What quadrant is our point in originally at the very top? So we're in the first. So everybody's going to be positive. x positive and y is positive. So we're going to choose our positive. So that's x right there. Of course, y equals x. So y is the same exact value, 1 over square root 2. So any algebra questions on getting these numbers? So we're going to take those numbers and back to the original circle and write them in. And now we'll write our three trig functions over here. Cos pi over 4, sine pi over 4, tangent pi over 4. Now I recommend you write uh, cosine of pi over 4 equals x, sine pi over 4 equals y, and tangent pi over 4 equals y over x, because every time you write it, it'll help you remember it a little bit better. It takes all of two or three extra seconds to write these down. And it's going to help you out a lot in the long run. And you're just picking x value right off of there. So that's 1 over square root 2. The y value is 1 over square root 2. Tangent is 1 over square root 2 divided by 1 over square root 2. And I did talk yesterday about multi-story fractions. What, what, what should you do when you see a multi-story fraction? Yeah, so yeah, rewrite as a product with the reciprocal of the denominator. This one's pretty easy, though. You can actually just reduce this right away. This is the number divided by itself. So this particular one is reducing to 1, because it's the same number divided by itself. So that's just 1. So there's our three trig values of pi over 4. Now this is going to seem like overwhelming amount to remember. At the end, we're going to do two more of these. And at the end, I will give you a table and a way to create the table that's way easier than going back through and doing all this Pythagorean theorem angle sum stuff. So I don't expect you to be able to reproduce what I just did, all this geometry. Maybe if you aced your geometry class in high school and really enjoyed it, you could do this. But this is pretty tricky to do. So the next angle we're going to look at is pi over 3 or pi over 6. We'll do pi over 3 first.
So same first step, draw a unit circle. So we could write it with the pi over 2 at the top, and then pi over here, but that's not getting us into thirds at all. There's not a nice way to write pi over 2 in thirds, so let's just forget about that for a minute. How can I write pi in thirds? How many pi over 3's is this? 3. So 1 pi is 3 pi over 3. So if we go halfway around, that's 3 pi over 3's, and I want to go just 1 pi over 3. So do your best to cut this upper half into three equal pieces. So it's going to look something like that right there. So you got some pretty big slices of pizza right there. And we're just looking at the first slice. So that angle is pi over 3. And now my circle looks really bad. <laughs> so there's the point we're looking for. And we're going to do the same thing we did last time. We're going to drop a perpendicular to the x-axis. And it's our goal to figure out x, y coordinates. So unfortunately, this time, we don't get lucky with the isosceles triangle. So we're going to have to do a little bit more geometric work to figure out what our different sides are here. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to redraw this triangle much bigger down below. Now, it should be pretty clear just from looking at this that the angles are not going to be the same. We can show that pretty easily because pi over 3 plus pi over 2, you don't get another pi over 3 in the upper corner up there. So the angle sum, there's no way we're going to get another pi over 3. Uh, we do have 1 on that side. So in your geometry class, hopefully you did some constructions if you took geometry, which is basically where you construct all these other triangles to get some property out of the first triangle. So the good news is our construction here is pretty quick and painless. Construct a mirror image triangle right here with the same pi over 3 angle, same side of 1. Whoa. Now, because we made the mirror image triangle, the two angles at the top, they're going to be the same. So whatever angle, that small angle on the right is going to be the same as a small angle on the left, just because it's mirror image. And so what I want to do is figure out what is the entire angle. So if I measured like that, what is that whole angle going to be? And we're going to use angle sum. So the triangle that we're looking at is this big one here. So we're looking at this triangle now. So we got a pi over 3, pi over 3, and your angle sum has to add up to pi. So it's pi over 3, pi over 3, and another pi over 3 at the top. That's how we get to pi. So I'll call this angle phi equals pi which if we write it, instead of writing it as pi, we just write it as 3 pi over 3. It should be pretty clear that phi is just pi over 3. So this angle all the way across is pi over 3. So that angle right there, I shouldn't write that right in the middle. So that angle right there is phi, or pi over 3. So what type of triangle, what's the name of this triangle? This is equilateral. There we go. Even better than the isosceles. So what do we know about equilateral triangles when, when it comes to sides? Sides are the same. Yep. So basically everything is the same about the triangle. Sides are all the same. The angles are all the same. So we have an equilateral triangle.
Is it AL or IL? It seems like it should be. I don't know. Maybe it should be an A equilateral. So big triangle is equilateral, so that means all sides are the same. So the third side that's not labeled is this bottom side. Now it's not, it's the entire bottom side as one, not part of it. So that's all we really need the big triangle for. Now we can look a little more carefully. What is this smaller side going to be right here? So the base of our original blue triangle. So that'll be a half just because we have the mirror image of another exactly the same uh, size line segment on the other side. So we got a half. You could label the half on the other side, but I only built the other triangle so that we can say that this side was one half. So we did all that work just to say this side's one half. All right, so that's our x coordinate for that we're looking for. All I have to do now is figure out the height. So I want to get the y coordinate. So y measures the full height here. How do I relate the y coordinate to the other sides? So we have a right triangle that we're looking at. Let me go and fill in the blue triangle. Oh, that's too much. So that's the blue triangle that we're looking at right there. How do I relate one, the side one, the side y, and the side one half? So we still have that right triangle, so we got Pythagorean theorem still. So we're going to relate it with the two sides squared. So we have y squared plus one half squared equals hypotenuse is one, so it's one squared. One half squared is one fourth, and one squared is one. And of course one is four over four, so let's just go common denominator. So we're gonna subtract one fourth, that'll give us three fourths. So y squared equals three fourths. So regular y equals plus or minus square root 3 over 4. Now we drew this in the first quadrant. So for the exact same reasons as before, we're using the positive of this square root, not the negative. And I can clean up the square root a little bit. So we can write it as square root 3 over square root 4. And of course, square root 4 is 2. So we can simplify this down a little bit to square root 3 over 2. So we got our x value is 1 half, our y value is square root 3 over 2. So we're going to go fill that in up above. And then right now, write down the uh, cosine, sine, and tangent of pi over 3. And make sure you reduce your tangent. It's going to be a fraction of fractions, so not okay to leave it like that.
there any questions on cosine, sine, tangent, or that reducing the fraction? So we have only one more angle to go. And this last one's going to go pretty quickly. So find the trig function, three trig function values of theta equals pi over 6. So we have our unit circle. That's a bad circle. So at the top we have pi over two, but I want to count in six. So how many pi over six is, is pi over two? So that'd be three. Three. We want to get halfway to oops, halfway to pi. So that's three pi over six. Now we can see pretty easily where one pi over six would go. So that's three pi over six. We're going to go one third of the way. So our triangle is going to be right there, pi over six. And we're going to do the same procedure we did before with the perpendicular down to the x-axis. And I want to know the coordinates of that point. Let's use angle sum here. So I'll call our third angle, I'll call it phi. So angle sum is pi over six plus pi over two plus phi equals pi. So we're adding up our three angles. I think we can do all this in sixths. So we'll write everything out in sixth. So how many pi over six is, is phi? So phi will be two pi over six. And when things are laid out in six, it's not too bad. You see there's one plus three more, and I'll need another two to get six. And that's of course, pi over 3 reduces. That seems familiar. That, those angles were the same as the ones from the last triangle that we just wrote out. So let's look back at that last triangle and see how they're related. So if I zoom out a little bit. So we're looking at that light blue triangle at the top of the screen. It's the same as the dark blue triangle at the bottom. The only difference is it's basically rotated or reflected. So I'll redraw that light blue triangle down here in the same color. Is that light blue legible on the screen? Yes. Oh, it's projecting off there. Nobody said anything for either class. There we go.
compute the other angle as pi over 6, but we did say that double that angle was pi over 3. So if we cut that angle in half from before, that angle at the top was pi over 3. If we just cut that in half, we got a pi over 6. And filling in the other information, we have all that. So how do we take that light blue triangle and make the dark blue triangle? You're basically thinking of a mirror image reflected across this line right here. So just think about that triangle just going like this. So it's just reflecting across that line. So it's the same triangle. I think they call these similar triangles. Anybody good on their geometry vocabulary? Similar. I think congruent means they'd be, have to be like lined up some way, but I think these are similar, called similar triangles. So they're similar. Oops. Which basically means they have corresponding sides that are the same. So writing in all the rest of the information on the sides. Our big side, square root of 3 over 2, and the little side is 1 half. So now our y coordinates the 1 half, and the x coordinate square root of 3 over 2. And we can write down our trig values here. So cosine is square root 3 over 2, sine is 1 half, and tangent, oh, and I just messed up my rule of always write down x, y, y over x. So we have a similar problem with tangent, so fraction of fractions. Now there is another way to get out of uh, a fraction of fractions, and this will work. Anytime your denominator, those small denominators are the same. And the, another way to get out of this, I'm going to multiply by 1. And I'm going to multiply by this version of 1. So the top 2 gets multiplied in the numerator, the bottom 2 multiplied to the denominator. And 2 times a half is 1. And in the denominator, square root 3 over 2 times 2 is just square root 3. So there's another way to reduce fraction of fractions if your denominators are similar. You could always just go with the multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. That always works. But sometimes this can be a little bit quicker. And I strongly recommend you don't rationalize things or you're going to spend some extra time doing arithmetic that you don't really need to be spending. So that's the last triangle that we're going to construct. So what we're going to do now is create a really big uh, first quadrant where we're going to put every single angle and all the points in one, uh, in one diagram. So we're going to draw a really big first quadrant because we need to fit five angles in here. So let's start out with the halfway, which will be the pi over 4. So that'll be the pi over 4. The other two angles that we need to draw in, there's a pi over 6 and a pi over 3. And the way those work, those are laid out in thirds. So you want to do your best to cut this into three pieces, which is about right there. So I'm using the blue marker to cut this into thirds as best I can. And now we'll label the first angle 0, and then pi over 6, pi over 4, 
pi over three, pi over two. So if you drew your angle too, your your circle too small, you'll have trouble fitting in all these angle measures. And now we're going to label all the points here. So let's label the easy points first. The first easy point is the x-axis point, which is 1, 0. The second easy point is the y-axis point, which is 0, 1. And I'll start with the pi over 4. That was 1 over square root 2, comma, 1 over square root 2. The pi over 6 point was square root 3 over 2. 1 half, and then the pi over 3 is 1 half square root 3 over 2. So the first question on Friday's quiz is going to be draw this quadrant with all this information. This is going to be question number one on your quiz on Friday. So I don't normally tell you exactly what the question is going to be, but it is important that you memorize this right here. So this is going to be question number one on your quiz. Just redraw the first quadrant with the five angles and the five points. So those numbers seem hard to memorize or a little bit arbitrary. There is already a pattern in the uh, points right here. So what pattern can you see happening? Think about the way that the x values progress and the way that the y values progress. So let's think about increasing. If we think about uh, increasing y values, I'll just use this highlighter to go through. Oops, I want to go through all the y values. So think about going that direction on the y values, and then the x values go the other direction. Do you see how they're the same numbers? So if you can remember one sequence, the other one just flip it around and go the other direction. So all we really need to do is remember one of those sequences of values. So how can we do that easily? The way we're going to do it is look at this progression. So if you can remember this sequence, and if you can reduce, you'll get the sequence that we have written down in the circle. All right, so all we're going to do is reduce these. So what does square root 0 over 4 reduce to? So that's 0. That one's pretty easy. So one, square root 1 over 4 is 1 over square root 4, which is a half. Square root 2 over 4, that's square root 1 half, which is 1 over square root 2. So that gets us to 1 over square root 2. Square root 3 over 4 is really similar. It's square root 3 over square root 4, so that's square root 3 over 2. And last one, what does square root 4 over 4 reduce to? One. That's just 1. So there we go. There's the numbers from 0 to 1, and how you can get them without using too many brain cells. There'll be plenty of other things to use your brain cells on later. You want to conserve at this point. All right, so you have your sequence right here. All you have to do is lay it out correctly on your unit circle when you're drawing it. So on your unit circle, the way I always start it, do the easy ones first, 0, 1, and 1, 0. And that'll 
give you an idea, oh, the x values are going to decrease as I go up, whereas the y values are going to start at 0 and then increase up to 1. So you should be able to take these two pieces of information and reconstruct your quadrant. Now, because you know the first question on your quiz, you should definitely ace it. The best way to ace it is test yourself. So maybe after your next class, can you redraw this? If you can't, go back and look through, draw it looking at all this, and then test yourself a couple hours later. Can I draw it tonight after dinner? And if you can draw it then, then you're OK. And if not, just keep doing that. Yep. Um, how many questions on average are on each quiz? Uh, it's hard to say, because some questions take a really long time, and some of them are really fast. Uh, this quiz will probably have somewhere around three. But anywhere from like one to four kind of depends on how involved they are.